Hello everyone, myself Tanvi Patel, working as assistant professor in computer engineering department in Mahatma Gandhi Institute of Technical Education and Research Center, Navsari. Subject is computer networks and our unit 3 is step transport layer. The topic is protocols of transport layer. In the earlier lecture, we have studied about the UDP that is user datagram protocol of the transport layer. Today, we are going to study about the TCP that is Transmission Control Protocol. TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol. It provides full transport layer services to applications. It is a connection oriented protocol means the connection established between both the ends of the transmission. For creating the connection, TCP generates a virtual circuit between sender and receiver for the duration of a transmission. Now next is features of TCP protocol. So stream data transfer. TCP protocol transfer the data in the form of contagious stream of bytes. TCP group the bytes in the form of TCP segments and then passed it to the IP layer from transmission to the destination. TCP itself segments the data and forward to the IP. Next is reliability. TCP assigns a sequence number to each byte transmitted and expects a positive acknowledgement from the receiving TCP. If acknowledgement is not received without a timeout interval, then the data is retransmitted to the destination. The receiving TCP uses the sequence number to resemble the segment if they arrive out of order or to eliminate the duplicate segment. Next is flow control. When receiving TCP sends an acknowledgement back to the sender indicating the number, the bytes it can receive without overflowing its internal buffer. The number of bytes is sent in acknowledgement in the form of the highest sequence number that it can receive without any problem. This mechanism is also referred to as a window mechanism. Next is multiplexing. Multiplexing is a process of accepting the data from different applications and forwarding to the different application on different computers. At the receiving end, the data is forwarded to the correct application. This process is known as demultiplexing. TCP transmits the packet to the correct application by using the logical channel known as ports. Next is logical connections. This is the features of TCP. The combination of sockets, sequence numbers and window sizes is called a logical connection. Each connection is identified by the pair of sockets used by sending and receiving processes. Next is full duplex. TCP provides full duplex services that is the data flow in both the directions at the same time that is full duplex. To achieve full duplex services, each TCP should have sending and receiving buffer so that the segments can flow in both the directions at the same time. TCP is a connection oriented protocol. Suppose the process A wants to send and receive the data from process B. The following steps will occur. First, it will establish a connection between two TCP protocols. Data is exchanged in both the directions and the connection is being terminated. This is the process which is happening in the TCP. Now next is TCP segment format. First is source port address. It is used to define the address of this application program in a source computer. It is a 16-bit field. Next is destination port address. It is used to define the address of the application program in a destination computer. 
it is also of 16 bit field next is sequence number a stream of data is divided into two or more tcp segments the 32 bit sequence number field represents the position of the data in an original data stream next is acknowledgement number a 32 bit field acknowledgement number the data from other communicating devices if acknowledgement field is set to 1 then it specifies the sequence number that the receiver is ex expecting to receive next is header length it is also called as h length it specifies the size of the tcp header in 32 bit words the minimum size of the header is 5 words and the maximum size of the header is 15 words therefore the maximum size of the tcp header is of 60 bytes and the minimum size of the tcp header is of 20 bytes next is reserved it is a 6 bit field which is reserved for future use means to use in future next is control bits each bit of a control field function individually and independently a control bit defines the use of a segment or serves as a validity check for other fields that is control bit so there are total six types of flag in control bit control bit field first one is urg the urg field indicates that the data in a segment is urgent it is urgently needed ack when ack field is set then it validates the acknowledgement number psh the psh field is used to inform the sender that higher throughput is needed so if possible data must be pushed with higher throughput next is rst the reset bit is used to reset the tcp connection when there is any confusion occur in the sequence number then the reset flag is set next is yn that is synchronization the synchronization field is used to synchronize the sequence numbers in three types of segments that is connection request connection confirmation and confirmation acknowledgement next is fin that is finish the fin field is used to inform the receiving tcp module that the sender has finished sending data it is used in connection termination in three types of segments termination request termination confirmation and acknowledgement of termination confirmation here the various fields are used first is window size the window is a 16 bit field that defines the size of the window checksum the checksum is a 16 bit field used in error detection urgent pointer that is urg if urg field is set to 1 then this 16 bit field is an offset from the sequence number indicating that it is a last urgent data byte next is options and padding it defines the optional field that conveys the additional information to the receiver now next is tcp addressing tcp communication between two remote hosts is done by means of port number port number can be ranged from 0 to 65535 which are divided as first is system ports 0 to 1023 next is user ports that is 1024 to 49151 and third one is private or dynamic ports which are 49152 to 65535 next is connection management in figure you can see how the initiator and the responder is being connected with each other and how they establish and release connection and pass message from each other here tcp communication works in client server model 
the client initiates the connection and the server either accepts or rejects it three way handshaking is used for connection management that you can see in the figure here the establishment of connection client initiates the connection and send the segment with a sequence number server acknowledges it back with its own sequence number and acknowledge of client segment which is one more than client sequence number client after receiving acknowledgement of its segment sends an acknowledgement of server response to the client next is release either of server and client can send tcp segment with fin that is finish flag set to 1 when the receiving and response it back by acknowledging finish that direction of tcp communication is closed and connection is being released next is bandwidth management tcp uses the concept of window size to accommodate the need of bandwidth management window size tells the sender at the remote end the number of data byte segments the receiver at this end can receive tcp uses slow start phase by using window size 1 and increase the window size exponentially after each successful communication for example the client uses window size 2 and sends 2 byte of data when the acknowledgement of this segment received the window size is doubled to 4 and next send the segment sent will be 4 data bytes long when the acknowledgement of 4 byte data segment is received the client sets window size to 8 and so on the cycle continues an acknowledgement is missed that is data lost in transmit transit network or it received an ack means no acknowledgement then the window size is reduced to half and slow start phase and starts again now next is multiplexing the technique to combine two or more data stream in one session is called multiplexing when a tcp client initializes a connection with server it always refers to a well defined port number which indicates the application processes the client itself uses a randomly generated port number from private port number pools using tcp multiplexing a client can communicate with a number of applications process in a single session that is multiplexing For example, a client requests a web page which in turn contains different types of data. That is the TCP session timeout is increased and the session is skipped open for longer time so that the three way handshake overhead can be avoided. This enables the client system to receive multiple connection over single virtual connection. this virtual connections are not good for servers if the timeout is too long next is congestion control when large amount of data is fed to system which is not capable of handling it then congestion occurs means if you add large amount of data to the system then once it will hang out then the congestion will occur tcp controls congestion by means of window mechanism tcp sets a window size telling the other end how much data segment to send tcp may use three algorithm for congestion control first is additive increase multiplicative decrease second one is slow start and third one is timeout react next is timer management tcp uses different types of timer to control and management various task first is keep alive timer this timer is used 
to check the integrity and validity of a connection. When keep alive time expires, the host sends a probe to check if the connection still exists. Next is retransmission timer. This timer maintains stateful session of data sent. If the acknowledgement of sent data does not receive within the retransmission time, then the data segment is sent again. Persist timer. TCP session can be paused by either host by sending window size 0. To resume the session, a host needs to send window size with some larger value. If this segment never reaches the other end, both ends may wait for each other for infinite time. When the persist timer expires, the host resends its window size to let the other end know. Persist timer helps avoid deadlocks in communication. Next is time wait. After releasing a connection, Either of the host waits for a timed out wait time to terminate the connection completely. This is in order to make sure that the other end has received the acknowledgement of its connection termination request. Timed out can be a maximum of 240 seconds that is 4 minutes. Now crash recovery. TCP is very reliable protocol. It provides sequence number to each of byte sent in segment. It provides the feedback mechanism that is when a host receives a packet, it is bound to acknowledgement that packet having the next sequence number expected. When a TCP server crashes midway communication and restarts its process, it sends TPDU broadcasts to all its host. The host can then send the last data segment which was never unacknowledged and carry onwards. This is the crash recovery of TCP. So that's all for TCP protocol. Thank you.